Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and in this podcast, I'm going to talk about mutations. Mutations are simply changes in DNA. And why is changes in DNA bad? Well, DNA, remember, is going to be transcribed to make something called this, messenger RNA, and that's going to be translated to make something called a protein, and that protein is going to make you. And so if you have changes in the DNA, that's going to cause changes in the messenger RNA, and that's eventually going to change the proteins, and it's eventually going to change you. And so mutations we tend to think of as being bad, but mutations are also good. In fact, all life on our planet started with a change in the DNA that was selected for or against creating the wonderful diversity that we have on our planet. And so when we're thinking about mutations and how they affect the proteins, a good analogy is to think about recipes. And so this is one of my favorite recipes. It's the Nestle Toll House Chocolate Chip Cookies recipe. And so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a quick mutation in this recipe. So if you look carefully, see if you can spot the mutation. I don't know if you saw it. Let me go back. Now there's the mutation. So basically what we have is a point mutation right here. So the word sticks of butter has been changed to sticks of butter. I could still read this recipe and I could make pretty good chocolate chip cookies. Now let's look at another point mutation. So I'm going to change one thing in this recipe. I don't know if you saw that. But if I change it again. So what I've done is I've changed the number of teaspoons from one to nine. Now what are the cookies going to taste like now? They're probably going to taste awful. I'm going to have way too much baking soda inside there uh, and they're going to taste awful, um, kind of alkaline, I would say. And so let's look at another mutation then. Let's say we have this mutation. Again, the first two are just changes in one letter. Um, let's look at this mutation. I bet you probably caught that one. So again, what are we doing? Well, basically, we're shifting this to turn on the oven to the end instead of where it should be, which is right back here. Is that going to change our cookies? For sure. Um, we're going to end up with not cookies. We're going to end up with dough. And so if you think about this, changes in the DNA is just like changes in the recipe. What causes them, however, it's not a typo. Basically, there are two ways that you can get mutations. The first are what are called spontaneous mutations. That's when just something in the process of replicating the DNA or forming the gametes goes wrong. And so a very common type, it's not that common, but a common type is called strand slippage, where the, the two strands, the parent strand and the daughter strand, will slip past each other, and then you get bonding that's not perfect. And so that would be an example of a spontaneous mutation. But a lot of mutations are caused by our environment and those are what are called induced mutations and so if radiation for example is causing skin cancer that would be an induced mutation uh, or cigarettes it's a chemical that's causing this mutation and we didn't used to know what was going on what we knew that cigarettes caused cancer but we didn't know exactly how it worked and so recent studies have shown that this chemical is just one of the mutagens found within cigarette smoke it's called benzoapyrene and basically if you look at this chain right here it's fitting right into the double helix and it's causing a mutation in the DNA now if it's an area where there's no genes it may not be harmful but if it's an area especially an area where we have cancer suppressing genes that's just going to lead to cancer and it's a cause coming from the environment and so basically just like with the recipe and the cookies we can have mutations just at one point and we call those point mutations or we can have larger mutations where big chunks of the chromosome are being moved and so let's look at the first type of point mutation so if I go and mutate I don't know if you caught that let's try that again this is called a, a substitution mutation. So right here we've added a C instead of a T. And so you might think that's bad. Well, we've got protection for that inside our cell. There are going to be uh, proteins that are going to cruise up and down our DNA. And when we have A bonded to C, it's not going to quite match up. And so we're going to know that there's something wrong. And so basically these enzymes could cut out the C and then they could put the T back in again. And that'd be no problem. But let's say they're cruising down and they see there's a C on this side and an A on this side. Well, they might think, not thinking, but they might realize that we have to get rid of this A. And so they're going to put a G in here. And so 50% of the time, they're going to rep replace the wrong letter. And if that letter is not inside a gene, it's no big deal. But if it's inside a gene where we're actually making amino acids to make proteins, it can be a huge deal. That's a substitution. We could also have radiation or chemicals that are causing the DNA to break apart like this. Well, we have a number of proteins that can fix that as well, but sometimes when they fix it, they'll actually add a new letter. 
And so this strand you can see is totally fine, but now we've added this new letter here. When this cell replicates, when it makes a copy of itself, this strand is now going to have an extra letter in it. And what that could do is it could shift all the letters over, uh, and that could screw up the whole protein. Or if we look at our DNA again, what's another thing that could happen? Well, maybe it's a chemical or radiation that causes one of our nucleotides to be lost. So now we're missing that. And now when the DNA tries to fix it, it will fold on itself. But we still have missing one letter on this side, so we have a deletion. And so this side, if we copy the DNA, it's fine. But if we try to make copies of this side, we're going to miss big portions, or at least one letter out of that gene. Now we can also have major changes or large-scale changes. And so this could occur during mitosis, it could occur during meiosis, but basically what we're doing is instead of losing one letter or one that could affect one gene, we could lose big portions of the chromosome and all the genes that are found within that. And so this would be a deletion where we're missing this huge chunk of the chromosome, which could be hundreds if not thousands of genes. Or this could be a duplication where we're duplicating a portion of that during the S phase. Or we could have an inversion where we're copying this but it's being flipped upside down. We could also have an insertion where we're taking one chromosome and actually inserting that into another chromosome. Uh, that might seem crazy, and it's like we could never exist past that. Um, but if you think about it, these genes have chromosomes, and so it doesn't mean that that individual is necessarily going to die. This could be during mitosis, and it, so it wouldn't be a very big deal at all. Or it could occur during meiosis, but we'd still have these genes that we need. And so this would be an insertion, and then we could also have a translocation where we're taking one chunk of this one over to here and this one back again. And so there's a ton of different mutations that we can have in the chromosomes, and that's probably how chromosomes came to be in the beginning. Some are good, some are bad, um, but they're all changes in the DNA, and I hope that's helpful.